Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. So this is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tony Talks. I want to have a discussion today. Y'all know what it is. There was a tweet that went around, and it's a lot of people. And it's it's actually interesting because I'm not sure if the poster was African American, but I know that a lot of the responses were African American. Uh, seemed like it was Ados people, and they just was talking. You know that they gonna save them. they gonna save their children. They didn't get no specifics, but I'll get into that in a second. This conversation comes in the context of a greater understanding of wealth than most people have, because we've been talking about it for five to ten years. We've been writing on it for five to ten years. Huffington Post, uh, Duke, we did an economic study there. Ados, Ados has been working at this. Most people are just talking, just randomly spitting out nonsense about what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. They have an emotional discussion in the economic space. Let me say it again. They're having an emotional discussion in the economic space. Rent can't get paid in hugs and kisses. We got people all around the country about to have this chat with us. You got people with an ADOS lineage trying to share money up and down in the middle of an era where you can't share no money at all. We gonna get into it and talk about it. Let's get right to it. So the, the tweet that came out was from this young lady. She doesn't have much of a following, but it hurt a lot of people's feelings. They got their feelings from it. They actually reinterpreted her tweet in my view because her tweet didn't say what they were implying to me. And I understand each person's gonna have their own view. Her tweet was speaking to, whether she understood it or not, the realities of necessities of being, of certain skills you need inside you if you work in class. And she was talking about it flat, like without the context of wealth. We're now living, and we'll get into it in a second, in a time where wealth inequality mirrors the depression. And you guys are talking as if you lived during your boomers uh, highfalutin era where, where uh, you know, the bottom 90% was taking home large shares of wealth, all that's gonna be hashed out. So your mouth come from your grandmama, but your life is lived in 2022 while you drive Uber and you talk to us about cracks. Can we get to it? Please support the channel, press the bell, share the, share the uh, video. A lot of people not gonna wanna talk about this because they just talk about what they gonna do, how they gonna save somebody. Full of student debt with a 650 FICO. No savings, no retirement. Don't want to pay for health insurance, but they going to save somebody. Don't got life insurance. Understand you don't got life insurance, but then you're going to get a car for your kid. What about if you pass away tomorrow? Huh? You paying that 220 a month, that 330 a month on uh, life insurance? Because life insurance don't give you no Netflix and no Disney. It's just something that is just pure security. We're going to buy a car for our kid, but we ain't got no, me, me ain't got no $500,000 policy, but we got two and three kids, and we're going to leave the mother with them kids if we pass away. Y'all buying your kids a car? Question, question. Because I most definitely will not. Again, this is her post, not mine. Maybe I'll help with like part of a down payment. But if they want a car, they're going to work for it. I don't care. I had to buy my own car. And I learned a lot about money management sacrifice, and I also felt proud AF. I still have my first car, laughing out loud. He's running well, despite being old AF. I think big purchases like cars and homes and even nice brand new phones should be the kids' responsibility, what she went to. A lot of people's feelings got hurt, and they started reinterpreting her, saying, I, you know, you're trying to push struggle on your kids. Call in is 310-388-3499. Come on in here. I want to hear about it. I want everybody to get context of what they're listening to. I wrote this piece back in 2016 with Matt, Matt Brunig, of Dem, formerly of Demos.org, Think Tank. I wrote at Inequality.org, Think Tank, for years. I've done mo, uh, uh, economic studies. We've talked about this wealth. We've dug the data out, which I'll show to you now. And without the family car, black wealth barely exists. So basically, on uh, in that data set, what it shows, this comes from the Federal Reserve. 
the middle black family, when you took out the family car, was worth like four thousand dollars. When you took out the family car and depreciating assets, they were only worth like uh, I think a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, something low. Depreciated as clothes, TVs, cars, not, things that don't count. So when we're talking about what you're a bit able to do, we're talking about it not from an emotional place. We're talking about it from an economic place. Are we all here on the chat? I see people coming in. Tiana said, any Adolf looking for life insurance, DM her. Huh. We talking today. We having a discussion that needs to be had because you're 40 years old and talking like you're 15. Can we talk? We're going to get through a lot of stuff today, but I need everybody to stop talking like they playing Candyland. There's real money here, not lollipop cards. You can't speak it into existence in an era where they have taken away your your ability to earn stability. You got to inherit that. I don't know if anybody told you. But I'm going to tell you today, without the family car, black wealth hardly exists. I also wrote a piece on the report I did uh, with Duke professors on this wealth gap. I've interviewed... All the major economists, you can check it out on my channel, uh, Mirtha Bataradaran, the guy that came up with the, the guy that came up with, the, uh, actually Shapiro, the guy that came up with the term racial wealth gap. We both agreed that wealth gap is the wrong term because it is not a wealth gap between blacks and whites. I wrote a piece on Fortune magazine, what we get wrong about closing the racial wealth gap. Start by rejecting the myths of a black defectiveness built out of the paper that we did, which you can go get for free on the internet. Just Type in what we get wrong about closing the racial wealth gap. So we're talking from an expertise here, and we're going to get right into it. But I got to go back to her tweet. Y'all buying your kids a car, question, question. I most definitely will not, but maybe I'll help with like part of the down payment. And the responses she got, can we get into it, were why the hell would I have children to put them through the same as I went through? Like, make it make sense. Rap. I rap. Look at this guy. He got his shades on. Okay. Um, I think putting your kids through unnecessary hardship just because you had to go through it is weird. I want to give my children the best possible tools. Again, we're going to go back to it. Are we in candy land? Are we in the real world? Okay, everybody in the chat. Please explain to me, are we in candy land or are we in the real world? Huh? Because I want to talk today. And thank you for the super chat. Please support the channel. But to talk, I have to have context. And that context requires you to understand this chart. Now, I've added some stuff because we always talk about it, but I want to give it numbers. How do I give it numbers and what is this chart? So this chart shows you the share of wealth in America today based on what part of the society you're in. You have the top 0.1, which is this brown line. It says it right here. That's only 123,000 households. You have the gold line, which is the 9.9. .9. Now understand, these two lines are almost all white people, other than the people you love, Shaq and LeBron. The people you love are in those two lines, so the, the 10 or... 25 people or 110 people, and you allow them to talk to you as if we all the same, and then express a stability to white America that doesn't exist. But we're going to leave that alone. This is pretty much all white families. This 9.9, .9, this 0.1 together, this 123 million families here, this 10, 10% worth millions of dollars walking around right amongst you. You send your kid to UCLA, and they go to school with them. So then there's another line, the black line. I need you to understand this because the context of, of saying that I'm going to buy my kid a car is really reserved for another segment of society and you probably exist in. You don't even know. So this black line here is the bottom 90%. Now you notice that it curves because what we're looking at is 1930, 1950, 1970, 1990, 2010. Now this chart, we're going to see it in another format. I want to jump around a bit. We're going to see it like this with colors, colors, so you can understand. The current black psyche is based on a time of wealth sharing. That's when these two lines are wide apart. 
not crossing. We live in a time that's similar to the Great Depression. Let's go back to the chart that I had up. Because I want to understand this as we get into the discussion. Again, so you know I'm not guessing. There's 123.6 million American households, and we're breaking them down. So 123,000 households now have, and that's why these lines are crossing, the same amount of wealth as the bottom 90% of households. To be at the top of the bottom 90%, you need to be worth about $600,000 as a household. Only 5% of all black households break 350,000, almost all boomers. So almost none of you guys break that. Nearly none. It's like infinitesimal. We having a discussion without talking about emotions, talking about what you're talking about. So these lines have now crossed, and it means that there's extreme oppression, extreme economic oppression, extreme wealth inequality, and you're talking as if you live here. In 1970, what you gonna do? Huh? So 123,000 white households have more than the bottom 90%. But hold on, let's go further. Cause I just told you to be at the top of the black line, the, the third line, the lowest line, you need to be worth 600. The middle of that line is about $110,000. Raise your hand if you're worth $110,000. You have black people driving Uber worth 5,000. No, hold on. Zero worth, no, negative wealth. Talking about what they're going to buy for somebody else. Can we talk about it? I want to get into it because I'm about to get into the discussion so I can get back to Candyland. So this woman said they're going to work for it. And they said that, that she putting them through struggle. Uh-huh not inheriting nothing, and they unnecessary hardship. Okay. So you're going to raise an uh, uh, ADOS working class person from you, and maybe you're high school educated, or even if you're college educated, you got student loans, you're going to get no inheritance, and you don't want them to have worked for their car because that's putting them through struggle. You don't know when you live in, but I'll make it clear today. How many people want me to make it clear in the chat today? The average price, and this is the problem, is you guys don't slow it down and have a real discussion. You have an abstract discussion about just cars, like it's Candyland, like you're 14 years old. No, 10. You remember that? That's my car. We're having a real discussion about what things cost today. The average price of a new car is creeping toward the $50,000. Hmm. Okay. People say, I ain't buying a new car for them. Well, let's just start off with, would your kid want a used car? Did you raise a kid that will take that old Tercel? Or are they going to complain like you done cheated them? But let's move on. Because the safe haven of the ADOS American, and it's largely the reason why we haven't been able to do mass politics, is fantasy vision boards given to you by Oprah, we'll get into that in a second, is tomorrow. So your kids are 15, you have nothing saved for college, but you're going to make it so they don't have to have loans like you. It is the fantastical promise of what you're going to do in the future, not based on inheritance or savings, but some projected win you're going to have from crypto or Powerball or something else. It is not a real world. It is the land of candy land where you can create Anything you want out of Plato. I'm living in a real world. And I'm looking at what she said. I'll help with like part of a down payment. But if they want a car, they're going to work. And then I'm looking at what people said. Why the hell? Well, I want you to put the same through. And I'm not understanding what they talking about. Consumers are shelling out an average $10,000 more for used cars than if prices were normal, research shows. So prices, so to buy a used car, because the used car market became where, where people who don't really have money or good credit go because the cars shot up because they couldn't afford new cars. So to buy a used car, you got to get cheated right now. That's where we at. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know that the market is that way because the market got inflated during COVID. <laughs> You don't know that the interest rates are six, seven percent with good credit, maybe 10, 15 percent with bad credit. Can I call her? What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
What's going on, Mr. Antonio? This is Christian Mosey from Fayetteville, North Carolina. How are you doing today? I'm all right, Christian. Let me say something to you. I'm going to say two things to you. Yes, sir. The average monthly car payment, this is bankrate.com, for used cars is $515. You got to pay about $200 for insurance for a, a late teen to drive his car with no accidents. Presumably they don't have no accidents, no that. So that's $700. That's with good credit, though, because I got a calculator later that show you real numbers which with bad credit. But at the same time, I got a chart on and make sure you have it on screen. The median household income, household, for blacks is forty six thousand dollars in twenty twenty one. Forty six seven. The income for individuals is twenty six. So basically, each person is making about five hundred dollars a week in the house. Adults, you need a hundred dollars just to get to work. You got still got to pay for your own housing and food, but yet you have told us that you're gonna buy your kid. A car that's five hundred fifteen dollars a month. Let me read one last thing to you. I'm gonna let you speak. So these people are saying they're gonna buy their kid a car. We know that the new car average price is fifty thousand, but the used car, the average price for a used car, twenty twenty two July, thirty three thousand dollars. Is this all fantasy talk? Hold on one second. Let me let this thing go by. It's a it's a helicopter. So I don't know if you got a chance to see the original tweet, but I have no idea what these people were talking about. I have no idea what, the, and it was it was so many like young black folks that just basically decided that one day not black and two wealth don't matter. Give me your uh, take on it. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I believe this is absolutely right, but um, I think the Candyland analogy is perfect, and then um, even with the terminology that you use, the, the, the empowerment point, that's brilliant because that's exactly what it is. It's um, this, this aspirationalism that is so unrealistic that it, it causes people to have. So I, I understand that in order for us to do the work that we're doing to fight for reparations and fight for the wealth and, and the justice that we're owed, it takes a level of optimism. But then there's living in fantasy world. So when, when you're talking about a group of people that have only $7.79 trillion of wealth and you want to compete with somebody that's got $131 trillion and you think that you're going to LLC your way being able to compete with that, that's, that's not the real world. That's not how that works. Um, and then for me, me being a young person, I'm, I'm 22. And can, so can, 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 I, can, I, can I frame something? Because I, I didn't want to jump in, but when you said that, I need the audience because we a lot of these people are not just the, our people that have been here that knew. For the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve released a chart quarterly that shows you the wealth level of different groups. Back in, in 1980, white Americans, the whole of white, they only had $2 trillion. We had like one or something like that, but they had two. I mean, less than one. I'm sorry. We had a couple hundred billion and they had two. So the gap wasn't that wide. Through a number of policies, Obama, Trump, Biden, starting with Reagan, they took off. White folks took off. So by 1990, they go from two to 24. By by uh, uh, Obama's era, they come all the way up to 60. They start to collapse. He buoys them through quantitative easing. They shoot up. From Obama to Trump to Biden, they have gone to 130 trillion. Uh, I have the chart in front of you, and the reason why I'm bringing it up in context of your discussion because you just brought it up because what we have is black folks having statements about stability transfers that they haven't received themselves, one, and two, that require you to be in a different segment of society. So when you look at Black folks, all of our little wealth is in real estate, mostly in the hands of people that are retired, 65 and older, 70 and older, and also in their pensions. And that's, again, people 65, is, everything else doesn't have nothing in the category. We have no savings. We have no private businesses. That's billions. White America has five just in consumer durables, 26 in, in real estate, trillions. This is trillions. They have uh, 12 in 12 trillion in businesses. That is where the statement, I'm going to buy a car, is undergirded, but this wealth. So when you don't have this wealth and you're living in the middle of a, of a, of a semi-depressive kind of era where you're driving Uber, you can't say I'm going to do these things and have no way to achieve these things. And then when you get depressed, act like everybody got to understand your depression. Go ahead. I'm sorry for jumping in. I wanted to frame that with this chart. Go ahead and finish. No, I, 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 
No, you did, I, and I and I appreciate it because that kind of segues to uh, another point I wanted to make. Because even when you mentioned the cars, the key the key thing that you mentioned there is the, this actually proves how bad it is. You're talking about a depreciating asset, but you have people that, especially our folks, that are feeling proud of themselves of being able to buy a Tesla, but you don't have any land, and that that's not the flex that you think that it is. And then, of course, with with, with young folks, I think it's important to note that the problem that we're having, especially with the, the lack of wealth. It didn't start overnight, um, not only just because of what was stolen from us, but we have, as the tweet shows, as a people, we have a big mindset where we think that we need to push the next generation through something that's completely unnecessary. And we're the only people that really think like that. Um, I personally come from two generations straight of uh, the heads of households at one point in their life being multi-billionaires. But the generation after that has to be starting from scratch. And, and, and I've been told personally um, by family members that when I when I needed help trying to purchase my own house and, and get different funds and the capital I needed in order to just do what I needed to do, I'm always told you need to grind and get it and do what I did. But just like you said, the, the, the mindset of thinking that we're in, or I think it's one of the comments said that the mindset of thinking that we're in a pre Reagan era, we can't we can't live like that anymore. Politics is just about timing. And it's also about the, you know, the motivation and everything, but it's very much about timing. So and, and, also, and, and also, and also, and also, and also, I would say, I would say, the situation you would describe is very aberrational. I don't even know if aberration describes that. Most black people got a, a parent or two parents that ain't gonna leave them much. Pay their loan cards in their wallet. And people be like, you're generalizing. Well, you don't understand what black people are in America. Then you don't understand that the uh, the middle middle black family in Los Angeles has two hundred dollars liquid. In Boston, they have eight dollars liquid. This is the color of wealth reports that were done in these cities, and uh, and uh, I think Miami it was like eleven dollars liquid. What you see is that you guys have projected. Hold on, a whole mindset without dealing with the numbers. Again, in America, black household income, the median number is forty six thousand for the whole household, two three people working. But if we look at it individually, it's about five hundred dollars a week per person. You need 250 just to make the 500. So when you take out your living, you negative once you take out your living, you're eating and you're driving, but then you're making promises about stuff that you can't fulfill because you live in an era where we didn't do the politics for it. Call it any last thing. I got a whole queue. I want to get to people. Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, well, number one, just saying thank you to, to, to you, sir, for all the work you've been doing um, and being able for me. I've been watching you for a long time. Um, so all, a lot of the political education has come from watching these shows and being able to disseminate uh, that information to some other viewers um, on, on my own talk show. And I'll just add this briefly. Um, I had the opportunity to actually get invited to my local um, juvenile detention center because they want me to teach a course on black history. And one of the things they, they wanted me to speak about was a lot about the, the wealth gap that we have in our community for these young men. Um, so I'll be using a lot of your, your data and your content to be able to share that with these uh, young men in order to help them realize where we're at in America. So I just want to say thank you, and um, I'll definitely be continuing to support uh, from the background, and hopefully I'll have the blessing to be able to meet you in person. Thank you so much. Press like on the show. Thank you, caller. We got a full queue. Sonya says she bought her first car for $600 in 1982. I think these people still think that the car is $600. Again, the average price for a used car in is $33,000, which is $172 below the peak in March, according to Copilot Research. We got uh, another person in here. TJ Diamond said she bought an SUV in 2019, used six months old. 20, again, 2019 is 2019. COVID happened. The interest rates are up. None of that is, is, is what's going on. Use use doesn't even get the what they call sub beaming the uh, interest rates that like she put up three point five now you go if you got especially if you got an average uh, ADOS person's credit you're gonna be like nine percent ten percent on used car and then in addition you're not getting that car for twenty one hold on you're gonna the car is gonna be worth really like around twenty one but what does this say at the top in twenty twenty two shall not an average ten thousand more. So her car now is 31. So everybody's talking from another year, like everything is flat. And we have lived through some of the most economic chaos. And I, I showed it to you before, but I will show it to you again. 
this is the chart without the colors in world history because of the wealth that's in america so so the depression the bottom 90 and the top 0.1 had the same amount of wealth due to policy labor unions we talked about it civil rights uh so many gender rights you saw this jump where the top point one, they didn't celebrate the rich in the 70s and all that. They didn't celebrate LeBron James. What are y'all doing? Oh, they love Muhammad Ali. They love their daddy more. They love their daddy more. So at the end of the day, you see the they, they took wealth from this uh, group and they got down to, I think they were taking home. They went from like 20 something to 7% or something, meaning the top point one as they should. They should all be really be lower than that. But now, because of Reagan and because of bad policies and because y'all don't know how to vote and because y'all don't understand politics and because all you do is do things and th uh, what is it, uh, fun things with Oprah, vision boards, Oprah's favorite things. You love Oprah more than you love yourself and don't even know it. Now they're taking home the same, more than us actually, because this is actually uh, back in 2016 or so. It's crossed now. So like we're just in economic chaos and y'all still making promises. And then when the promises don't happen or when you got to get to making the promise, you kill yourself or you get depressed. And then we got to be here to hear your depression or I got to hear you say, give me a solution. So I got to make a solution because you bit off all that life that you can never afford. But my solution was actually to not bite off all that life. But you told me not to tell you that. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's happening? Tony Rasheed from Maryland. What's up? I want to call him because I'm. Um... I wanted to call in because I'm doing pretty good. I hope everybody's having a you know, pretty good holiday season. Um, you know, uh, I called in because uh, when my, you know, I moved my girlfriend up here with me uh, up here in Maryland, and it, it was a big move, you know, to uh, to get her uh, driving and go through driving school, and um, you know, a few things fell into place because uh, you know when all the jobs were popping up, we were able to get her a teller job, you know. So, and I'm a contractor, so um, you know that. Nothing amazing, but you know, you know, we both make we both make between about uh, forty and forty five thousand dollars a year. Um, and you know, I had to, I had to, you know, uh, she tried to drive on my car, and it was crazy because um, one of the one of the other um, tweets that I was chatting on was one of the sisters. She was saying she liquidates her car, you know, and I didn't uh, you know, because my job basically had me run a delivery for uh, you know for the company that I work for. Can we can um, I frame that? You know, can I so frame that for everybody? What he's saying, what he's saying is something yeah. I, I, I told everybody just to explain it because it's very hard to see if you do it. When you drive Uber or you do Grubhub, they're not paying you to deliver the car, the food or to drop people off. You're liquidating your you're doing micro liquidations of your own car. So each drive is like you sell your lug nuts, you sell the, the little thing that hold the hood open. You can think of it that way. I know it's hard to. But you're just liquidating your car because a lot of times you don't count depreciation. The only way that makes sense is somebody gave you the car. Because then you could, if you're paying a car note, it's ignorant, but you need the cash. So you say to yourself, and we'll go through a, a, a set of threads later, I want to buy my kids some Christmas gifts. But would you sell your lug nuts to buy Christmas gifts for your kids? Hmm. I need everybody to understand yeah, like the that. state of war you're at, where we're at. Go ahead, caller. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I put um, about a, a little bit over 20,000 miles on my car every year, you know, and it was crazy because um, I was chatting with my girlfriend. I was like, you know, when we get you a used car, you know, we have to uh, find you a car with very low mileage because, you know, I was pretty, you know, before she got the, uh, the better job, I was pretty much expecting her to have to, you know, do a lot of traveling for her work and stuff like that. Uh, but thankfully, you know, one of my buddies called me up and he's like, hey, you know, we're looking for work over here. So I was able to help her out and get a different job. Um, but the thing that was the, the thing that was the craziest thing about it was the fact that um, I actually had to get her um, an account with the credit union I'm at. And then I had to use my credit to help her with the down payment. Who, you know, is, who, down. who is, is this your daughter, you said, or your girlfriend? I'm sorry. My girlfriend. My you, yeah, yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot. Because this is a lot. Majority of us don't have the access. Yeah, 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 yeah I get it. I, it don't just, it, but, but what, yeah. what, what's a trip to me? And I'm not telling anyone how to run their household. We all grown people. Is you have the, you have people, men and women, playing the role of parent for somebody. And I just hope that that person can see that. I, I think, 
I hope that person can yeah, see no, that. I, I do. I do see that. And that was the whole thing. You know, it's like it's like because our parents were not in a position or, you know, well, look at that. You would just say that. They weren't in a position to be able to do all that stuff for us in the first place. Now we're having to play catch up when we're in our 30s. And it's like, okay, well, you, you know, your your life's trajectory is set by certain things. And that was one of the things that I was like, you know, we're not going to be able to work more and get better jobs and take advantage of this upswing in our 30s uh, unless we both are driving and we're both able to, you know, put our all into our work. And, you know, so it was a big, heavy push to, um, you know, just to get us both driving, both work hard that we can both afford. And, you know, the more I listen to you and you that talk, it's like, you know, the thing is that most people, eight out of ten of us, don't have anybody around that can, like, just even nudge us in that direction. So when it came time for us and I was doing all this stuff with her, you know, it was like, you know, you know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was an eye opening, right? And, you know, it's like, you know, nobody wants to be like, oh, my parents, you know, they weren't doing nothing, but it's like, you know, they didn't do enough. And it's like now, but let, let, let me let, let's frame that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's slow that down because I think that that gets lost. So literally, people that were born into one of the best times, probably the best time economically for Black folks in in U.S. history, did a substantially less than everybody trying to do today. How that makes sense? We live in a worse time, and then we're saying telling ourselves that we're gonna build other people up. I have no idea what most people are even talking about, but like then they get depressed when they can't build other people up or that person leave. So you pour all that into that person and then they walk off and now they can drive because that was supposed to be something her daddy did. I'm just saying that what is straight. And so like what, what what's weird about this moment is we're all trying to ma- make shift and put it all together. But if we don't understand the economics, we ain't even... Sh- I had somebody talk to me about getting an EIDL loan from the government on a couple of shows back or something, and they gave 10000 of it to their mama. That's a loan. When the $200 payment come up, you can't complain then that you don't have it. That's not something that you gift upwards. Money flows down. But there's another level to that statement. I always tell you that part. We live in an era where money don't flow. Because we are born into an era that's similar to the Depression, you don't pass money on. They didn't gift you in that in that way. You didn't acquire those kind of wealth assets. You cannot talk yourself into it. You can't vision board your way around it. And I think for a lot of people, whether you do it today or whether you find out when they go to college, how many people remember this 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 right here? We jumping around. Indiana mother student loan debt almost prevents daughter from enrolling in college. And uh, Nayaya, caller, I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you calling. Uh, Nayaya Martinique tried to move into her new dorm as a freshman at Spelman College last week after driving for hours from Indianapolis to Atlanta, but she quickly found out that she could not move in until she paid the. Last 4000 of her tuition. But as Martinique sat at the college financial aid office, she found out, the mama found out, that she had already taken out as many loans as she possibly could. I was excited to move in and just go to college. I'm sorry. This is the daughter finding out. So the mama tried to co-sign. Things did not get better when her mother, teacher and veteran, Tajaya Downs, tried to step in to help. It was then that Downs found out that years of neglected student loan debt had negatively affected her credit. So we didn't find out that our stuff was not in order until we got to the financial aid office at the school. We we took the long ride. We put the gas in the car. We promised the babies everything going to be all right. Then we found out at the office, but we also came into the chat of this woman and told her that I'm going to buy my, my, my daughter a car. So we couldn't have a respectable and, and conversation because you're just talking about Candyland. Can we get to it? Can y'all see it? Again, average new car is thirty-three thousand. Payment is five fifteen. The insurance is two hundred. And you you making five hundred dollars a week? Talk about it. I'm gonna get to the chat in a second. Conversation. I got a whole queue of people. I know everybody wants to get into this. And people don't want to hear this. People don't want to talk about it. People don't want to have this conversation. They hustling backwards. 
But there was a different conversation being had by white America in this same chat thread, meaning the conversation that triggered the, the show. Y'all buying your kids a car because I most definitely will not. Maybe I'll help with like part of the down payment that got reframed as putting their kids through struggle by black folks. That conversation was being had by people that weren't Adolfs. And it was a more functional conversation. My seven-year-old, my seven-year-old already knows we'll meet her halfway. Whatever she manages to save for a car, we will match it within reason. That way we're helping. But she's equally as invested in the huge responsibility that is car ownership. I want you to go look at that thread and compare the level of reply coming out of our people versus this comment. The confidence with which this woman has said this, Bree, Bree said that confidently because she knows she's going to get it from grandma. She knows where her money coming from. She has her promise fulfilled most likely before she made the promise. I'm just here to talk about it. We only pay cash for cars, which means waiting and saving diligently for years. But our parents both paid for our first cars in high school. Just an example that you can raise kids who are good with money, even if you help them with money. Corey explains, looks Latina. She says, buying them? No. I got my mom's old 1999 Buick Century when I was 15, back in 05. My brother got my dad's 85 Chevy Razor when he was 15 in 2014. There are levels to this conversation. There is a lack of context being given, so we're going to give it today. This is why we don't have politics. I need you to understand your calamity for me to help you see how to save yourself. You can't come to me for a solution when you think you got all the answers and you ain't got A, B, C, or D. Ain't no point in us talking. You need to go through it. And I don't want to talk to you when you're depressed afterwards. I don't want to talk to you 2 a.m. leaving the bar drunk. I don't want to talk to you after you got the DUI. I don't want to talk to you after you get down to the financial aid office. Come on. Can we talk about it? And you realize finally that you got student loans in your FICO 605. I want to talk to you beforehand and have the conversation that we need to have. Let's let us all. Can we have the conversation today? Everybody in the chat, because I want to have this discussion. These I had a couple of replies to, and, uh, and to the woman's conversation, giving it a deeper context, because I think she she got the surface. But if we don't get the, the root, we don't understand. Number one, I did a five to six part tweet. Interesting thread. It shows a severe lack of understanding of the moment. Interesting thread. It shows a severe lack of understanding of the moment. While the tweet framed it around work, that's what she did, it's much deeper. Our generation will not have the wealth to promise more than we had. And almost no one tweeting replies seem to get this basic economic truth. So the people that get to tell their kid that they're going to buy them a car got, a, got the wealth from their grandmama. They got it during the era when wealth was actually growing for the middle class. Or they're just rich. It's not a person driving Lyft tonight. That person has just shown you that they don't understand. They don't fully grasp like adult living in America. And you might as well end that conversation there. Number two, many were subtweeting with no grasp on the shift in wealth we are living through and also understanding the way cars have shifted both in cost and who manufacturers target. Economy cars are dying, meaning they're not making that sub $20,000 car anymore. They've taken all that metal and all those chips, the microchip shortage, and putting them in uh, uh, fifty dollars and $60,000 cars. People are in the thread totally void of understanding economics in America. Just toy soldiers, Bobby dolls, children playing with Candyland. Number three, the average payment on a used car, 2022, second quarter was $515. And that's, so again, the average black person in America made $500 a week. The average payment on a used car was $515. And that's before the loan rates hit 6% with good credit. You have people driving Uber or doing contract work saying they are buying their kid a used car. Next, they say, my 15-year-old won't have college loan. My 15-year-old won't have college loan. 
And you ask about the 529 plan, and they have nothing to say. We doing it tonight. We got people half crazed. Can we talk about it? They got people out here. Did y'all know they out here giving people 16% interest, 20% interest on these used cars? Because your FICO 600 and you ain't got no cosigner. Can we talk about it? People don't know. They just be talking like life is free because they ain't really dealt with life yet. Number four, 16 year olds, this is according to bank rate, drivers at an average of between $2,000 and $2,300 to their parents' full coverage policy annually. And let them get in the accident, and you see where it goes. People will buy the car and skip the $200 of my insurance because they can't afford the full cost of responsibly buying their kid a car. That last part is what I said. Number five, and this is overlapping the whole thing and part of what happens during wealth inequality. A thing don't mean a thing in wealth inequality. The last thing is that the irony is a car doesn't mean the same thing during this era, 2022, of during this era of mass inequality, wealth inequality, post Uber. So I understand you're trying to give your kids stability, but you gave them a car and you are you, so you have no wealth. So post Uber, a car without additional wealth is just giving them the tool that allows them to deliver food for Grubhub or taxi for Lyft. It's not just you providing transport anymore. So you basically have now gave them the tool so they can be out at 3 a.m. and drop people off. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? All right. Come in, call Ooh. back in. Oh, go ahead. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling oh, from? Is it me? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, it's uh, Corey. Can you hear me coming? Here you just fine. What's your take on this? And I've been spreading this message to the people I know. And man, it's just, it's a harsh reality of what's going on that a lot of people just don't understand. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of the people I know, family members, shoot, friends, people I grew up with, they look at me. And I'll just be honest with you, I'm actually, I don't. I'm one of the exceptions of when you bring up, you know, certain statistics that, you know, what people is making and, you know, wealth inequality and things like that. I've been fortunate. And I wouldn't necessarily say I've been fortunate because, you can, know, can, I, can, I, can, can I focus you in? Because I got a lot of calls. I'm going to ask you something more succinctly. I'm, I don't want to, because I know this is a topic that gets to people's heart and soul in a way. What do you think about the responses that these people have given? Because I want to read some of them. I want to, well, actually, let me read a testimonial to you. And I want to know, right after I read it to you, I want to know what, what you think. So someone, and I respect her, thank you so much for replying, because it gives context to the truth versus the fantasy of Candyland. I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to come right to you. Ados Revenge posted a set of tweets. She said, true story, I picked up a geek job to earn extra dough for Christmas. The money was okay, but for what I'm trying to do, of course, Tone's words, uh, the money was okay for what I'm trying to do. Of course, Tone's words, meaning me, rung in my head about having to liquidate our cars to survive, even if it's not survival, just a mom wanting her kids to have a nice Christmas. I'm going to be raw with y'all. During my deliveries, I ended up in a neighborhood, the kind you see on TV the kind I didn't even know existed. Come on. Anyway, it's cold, raining, dark, and I get to this magnificent house. And I want some people to, let me pause for a second. Uber gonna take you two places, to the, to the ghetto, and then it's gonna take you to the wealthiest neighborhoods in your city. You don't wanna really be in either one of those. All that unclean, that little bubble living, Uber will bust you out of that it will wake up your, your state of adosness. It will let you know what's coming. It'll leave you depressed. It will break your heart when they drop you all of a sudden for next to nothing. 
And I think for a lot of people, they don't understand. Once that thing exists, it should tell you what's coming for your children and for you. Anyway, it's cold, raining, and dark. And I get to this magnificent house. I mean, breathtaking. I look through the window and I see this white woman in her beautiful kitchen, marbled out, just effing lovely. Her husband was sitting at the island, tapping away on his laptop while she prepared dinner. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie. As I pulled out the driveway, I was struck with this immense sadness. I was surrounded by hundreds of years of stolen that stuff. I felt so weak for crying like that, but when you know what they've done, it's so heavy. Anywhere else, I say this and folks don't get it. But I know the Adolf's people get it. Give me your take on that. You know what, I actually saw that tweet because I saw it on Twitter. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a harsh reality. You know, one of the things that it remind me of is, I don't know if you ever, uh, it was a Chris Rock uh, stand-up. It was about, it was a while ago. And Chris Rock said, you know, in order, to be, in order for me to get to where I've been, I had to be one of the best. I'm one of the, you know, top five to me. You know who my neighbor is? A dentist. Because that, that's just the reality of what it is. They get left, they get wealth left to them. And black people, in order to get to situations like that, you got to go above and beyond and be in the top 1% of 1%. But I saw that tweet, and, and, and it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, and the way it is might leave us the way it's out. Caller, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for calling. Meaning, eventually y'all going to have to pay this bill. All this talking, and we'll get into some more of the replies from, to the, the initial tweet that the, she said, that what she said about only paying for the down payment, how everybody started to basically shame her as if they have, came from independent wealth, multiple generations, and weren't Adolf's. But before I say that, my last reply to her tweet in my own subthread was many that are millennials and Gen X were raised to believe that they were each special, quotation mark, and they would be path changers for their families. People born into the depression, again, the last time these lines crossed, because again, 123,000 white families have the same amount of wealth as the bottom 90%. That means that we're in immense wealth inequality and that you should be happy if you can give love to somebody else's stability and time. But also the bottom, to be in the bottom half of that group, you need to be worth 110, $100,000. You're not worth that. Your negative wealth making promises that you can't pay for, that you ain't got no inheritance coming to your grandma and to your child. How many cars have you promised? Have anybody thought about that? Let me say it again. How many cars have you promised? since you're going to make everybody's life better. You talking about, listen to this. I see you in there, princess. This one for you. Not to you, but for you. You're going to get this one. You got people talking about they're going to buy a car for their child that don't make potato salad for Thanksgiving. You don't clean up Thanksgiving. You don't cook the turkey at Thanksgiving. And you going to give stability to your child but you got three of them, and you, I guess the first one, maybe? I don't know. Can we talk? Many are many that are millennials and Gen X were raised, you hear, you hear me, Tiana, lazy as can be, talking about what they gonna do to save somebody else. Ain't made no desserts. Sweet potato, banana pudding, you can watch YouTube and make, make these desserts. And you going what you are, what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna have nobody struggling around me. Grandma, grandma, whole body breaking down. She, work tone talk. She told me he told me go, so I'm gonna go. Many that are millennials and Gen X. This is the key to what you're seeing. I want everybody to know what they're seeing. They're seeing a reflection of ego. You're not seeing selflessness. When these people are talking, who are these people? These people right here. Let's go back to them. They talking ego. Ah, not mine. I got to worry about mine. They don't even know what they're talking about. They things and things, favorite things, vision boards on Oprah Daily. 
I want to go back. Let me go back. I want to read it. Many that were our millennials or Gen X were raised to believe that they were each special and they would be path changers for their families. People born into the depression, meaning people that were living on the riverbanks, under tents that they made from clothes, people born into the depression or the last time of mass inequality were not infused with this myth mythology. It really is craze personified. Mario Matthews gave a couple great tweets under my tweet. I'm gonna come to the conversation here on the phone lines. The phone line queue is full. One last thing, Tone Talks, you and Breaking Brown are essentially a modern Noah's Ark. However, even in that story, Noah couldn't save everyone. The difference here is that in order to save anyone, a critical mass must work together. Yet the masses have been taught to fail. Crazy, come on, Mario. Power to Mario, he got it. Yet this craze personification has primed the population into a state in which Everything is transactional, despite the majority of us not having the resources and the knowledge base to adequately facilitate those desires. Hence the slow motion train wreck. I feel sorry for kids. Y'all sitting up watching Meghan Markle and Oprah's favorite things and vision boards. Damn near 45 years old. You can't live on candy alone. You can't have a sweet tooth at 56. You got to eat some vegetables. Y'all living on hip hop and dreams and aspirational desires. Candyland. We got, let, let's look at some of these other replies. I, so I think putting your kids through a necessary hardship just because you and the amount of black folks that were in here just talking uh, and we know the wealth condition, you know, they're making $500 a week. That's the average. Brown there uh, is weird. I, I, weird is the word she used. She don't have any better words in her vocabulary. She gonna buy a car for her kids. I want to give children the best possible tools to succeed. Lady comes back with a quote, life is fair because it's unfair to everyone. Hardship is a part of life. Kill it. My son will be getting a car for me. He won't be struggling on his first car in college. All the black kids on campus didn't have one and white kids had brand new Jeeps. He will still learn about making good financial choices. I'm getting mine a car. That's what Southern Ray Bell said. She getting hers a car. Is getting them a car, paying for it all the way like full or just like you're going to do the monthly? Sometimes as long as they're good to you and nice to you. I just, I'm just i just trying to figure out so we have the terms. Because you're not going to go in there with $2,000 and just buy a car no more. I'm definitely buying both my kids a car, both of them. Each at 18 if they decide to pursue college locally. If not, they can get financial aid from me to help live better on their scholarships abroad. Okay. But he ain't ADOS. Osama al Baghdadi. Daddy. Whew. Told my dad I wanted my first car to be special, like Keep for Life. I got lucky and got myself an 88 Firebird. For a thousand dollars. What year is that? 1983. Now listen to the last one I got. If I can't afford to buy my kid a car when they're ready for one, I will definitely do that. She just said nothing. She could have left that tweet out. Do you guys see it? It ain't a double negative, but it's almost like a double positive. If I can, I will definitely. Come on. We already know whether you're going to be able to, because if you were able to, you would have it today before the kid get here. That's what wealth inequality means. They ain't told y'all yet? Let me take another caller. Woo-wee. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hello. Hey, how you doing? Give me your take on it. Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Okay. Hey, I'm from out of Southern North Carolina. Uh, I, 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 I was able to, I, I'm a little different. I was able to pay for my kids' cars. They wasn't able to get brand new cars, uh, but uh, I was able to pay for both of my kids' cars when they turned 16. And I was also able uh, to pay cash for my wife uh, to get her master's. Uh, I was able to pay cash for my oldest daughter uh, to get her bachelor's and her master's degree. Uh, I was able, I'm paying cash right now for my youngest daughter to get her uh, bachelor's degree. So, you, so pa 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 pause for a second. 
Pause for a second, because I want I don't want to have an abstract conversation. I want to have a specific one. So your kid, if your youngest kid is getting her bachelor's, that means that she was 16 like five years ago, six years ago, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, we're Correct. in a whole different era now. Like, it, that's what I mean. Like, it's like the way that black people are talking is flat, economically flat. Nothing works that way in America. And so, like, I don't know how you say, not you, I'm not asking. See, somebody will talk to you and you won't really, and it's not your job to know, it's their job to know know that all that is nice but it don't even matter today because cars the average used car wasn't thirty three thousand dollars when you did that so you got lucky you hit you hit the lo timing lottery and then you have some other things probably in your life the problem is that black america has defined itself by the aberration not not and, and and i'm not saying it's wrong for what happened to you that ain't black america across this nation though black folks are struggling and I, it's not your fault but the problem is that that when when this happens we don't contextualize just since the pandemic and i watch show, i watch a show on it i've shared it on my show a couple of times called yaa or something just then they cover it every night just since the pandemic because of the uh the shortage in, in product and uh in microchips along with uh, a number of, sh of shutdowns due to covid along with just manufacturers saying i don't want your money no more it ain't enough along with the interest rates we've seen the, the interest rate hikes over the last year we're at six percent seven percent for uh, new cars, so all of those things. Well, I ain't saying, I ain't saying new cars. You can, you can still, you can still purchase a used car. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, I, I'm not guessing. I'm saying to you that what has happened is that has affected the down market, the down market, the used car market. And I just gave you the average used car price. It is a place for people with low credit to be taken advantage of now. That's what they did. It's a whole different world. So when we talk about something, a thing. We have to be honest about what that thing is today in this moment. What we do is that we'll talk about it in the context of, say, your what your story is from 2015, or we'll talk about it in the context of our grandparent in 1992, or we'll talk about it in the context of our father in in, uh, in 99. But the reality well, is, I, well, I, I just had to, I just had to, I just I just had to pay uh, tuition last night uh, for her semester, the uh, spring semester coming up. So I'm still paying. I paid cash. Again, last night for tuition, so it's still it's, it's still, still it's still real cost coming. I, I just bought a, I just and I just bought another van last year. I paid cash for that uh, for uh, uh, for my son. Can I ask how old so you I, are? We're still able to do it. Can, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm just turned fifty. Okay, I just, just turned fifty. Okay, and so that puts you as a Gen Xer, right? Uh, pretty much like a young Gen Xer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like a young Gen Xer. What I guess what's what's interesting is you're on the backside of being the last into a window of, of certain opportunity. I just don't see happening for people under that age. And I'm not saying a lot. In my, well, uh, I, 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 go ahead. Yeah, but I, I what you call I got I got uh, I, I I got kicked out of corporate America. Uh, I got kicked out of corporate America. Okay. Uh, I went to college and I was trying to find corporate America to go that route. Uh, but I got I got caught in the top college. I got caught in the dot com burst. I had to go make it for myself. Okay. And uh, and uh, that that's the way I had to do it. I had to I had to go create my own little small businesses. Hey man, hey, I, I just know I just know this. I just know this, and I, I end it here. And I thank you so much for calling in. I just know that the uh, only five percent of black households with everything they have is worth three fifty. And what you just described is putting out four four hundred five hundred thousand dollars liquid, and that just makes you a strong aberration. And I commend you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so like what we what's happening right now is somebody will talk to that one person and dismiss almost everybody else they've met that's black in their whole life ever. Because that person will tell you all those things. The person that has 605 don't tell you. So you run into people all the time with 605s, 580s that are negative. They don't tell you nothing. That guy will tell you everything and you build your whole identity on him. But he ain't told you everything. He didn't talk about inheritance. He didn't talk about where the money's coming from. He didn't talk about, hey, are you are you all paid up on your taxes? Do you have child support? I'm not saying he does have any of those issues. We live based on this projection from aberrations because we need to build our identity on things and things. But I'm just talking about numbers. And I'm just telling you, 2022 ain't 2015. And in 2022, the average used car is $33,000. 
the average used car payment, and we'll, let's let, 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 let's make it real. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna front. Let's make it real. Can I make it real? Let me ask everybody in the chat because I want to talk. Woo wee! Can I make it real? Everybody in the chat. People in the chat saying I can make it real. So I'm a, I'm gonna bring it to specifics. I don't like to talk about generality. Look at this. 67%, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it right here. So when you add these categories up, that's what I'm doing. Come on. They released, FICO released this. 67% of Americans are above, I'm sorry, not FICO, TransUnion released this. Uh, uh, look at this. 67% of Americans are above a 670 FICO. That's just normal. Only 21% of Blacks break 700 likely mostly boomers. Not sure if Adolph's people are adding it all up and being honest, out here promising college to kids and homes to mates. American dreams cost real politics. More than 50% of white households had a FICO credit score above 700, compared only with 21% of black households, according to a 2017 study by the Urban Institute. Okay, so how does that apply to cars? So you're driving Uber, your FICO is about a 610. Your daughter is 14. She's going to need a car in two years. And you're going to make sure she don't go through what you're going through right now. All right. Hmm. Let's do a calculation on what that $33,000 car, and we got the number from here. We're just using the average used car. It's going to cost. Because the other thing we didn't really talk about with this man, because I guess it was what the car was that he bought. I just know what the, I'm using these numbers in real world talks. Auto price, $33,000. Loan term, 60 months. You got black people out here. Don't get me wrong, other people as well. But you got a lot of black people out here. They're not doing 60 months no more. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. That's five years. They going out to 72. They going out to 84 seven years to bring that payment down which makes it like the craziest investment like crate because you're on a warranty and you buy driving an old car you still got payment come on long term 60 months it's a used car so the interest rate is higher nine percent again other thing that he that got lost is not just where the cost of cars substantially lower but that was when money was cheap. So he, he could go in there and get on a used car 3%, 4%. He might be paying, say he paying cash. So he buying everything cash and, he's, you know. But I know that in Tennessee, let's just talk about it. Somebody going to put $500 down, pay 9%. What's their payment look like? Uh, what does their payment look Seven twenty eight for the car, for the used car. So we out here making promises with no context of the reality of what a thing costs. We know that 123,000 households now have the same wealth as 110 million. And we in the bottom 50 million of that, almost of the entire race. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? So this is Corey. What's up, Corey? Um, I just wanted to bring uh, basically context to your show of what you're talking about. Um, I'm one of the people you're talking about who work a contract job, who make $500 a week. And like my mom say, that's like a gig job. You don't get no pension. You don't get no health insurance. You basically just working every day. Come on. Because we didn't even add how many hours did it take to make the 500 Huh. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we, no, could, we didn't. you know, so, so, so we gonna promise somebody else a car when we, when we are basically put into a moment of mass instability to build our own ego about our potential. I can't even promise my kids' car. So I can't even promise this, promise to pay for them to go to community college because I literally don't have it. That's all I'm saying. The moment is real. I mean, I literally like. Like, I don't have it. Like you said, the people who need the, the policies the most are the people like me. I need it. 
And you can't even get financing likely with the gig jobs, you know. No, you can't. No, because they want to see stable income. As they should. You know how you can't get a financing with a gig job? If your if your mama and your your grandma give you the car, if your mama or your grandmama co-sign, because they really don't want to finance it. If your mama and your grandmama really step up and be what what mamas and grandmas have to be to make you elite. But you can't make the promises like your mama and grandma leaving you that. I I tell you this. I'll say just the the previous car you had, five years, I would say at least like five years ago, I couldn't go and get a car. I had to have my mom co-sign for me because I don't have the uh, credit score to go in there. Campbell said uh, that she bought bought her car nineteen thousand dollars two years ago. Go try buy it again. The reality is that what's, yeah, ha- right. what's happening is they they decided to cut all that out. So everybody's built their identity on another time. You can't build your identity that way. Today is today. No. Uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. no, I'm just saying, no, you can't go buy a car today. The interest rate is high. You're probably going to get charged over 9% for a used car, probably from 2014. And not to mention, it probably come with over 25,000 miles already. Yeah, they, because what the, what's happening is they, they're squeezing that wealth inequality, and that's when the parents show up. So a lot of you guys built your whole identity that you're special and that you was going to be the one to lift your family in the middle of a, a mass depressive era and it made no sense so now your identity comes up against the truth of your reality and what's left up behind is just depression and I'm, i i kind of give you these shows so at least you know because without these you wouldn't even know that wealth inequality exists the way it does thank you so much for calling because i think that a lot of people gonna blame themselves because everybody's saying that i'm gonna pay for a car ain't none of y'all paying for no car for no key because you don't pay for your own car like i said now this article came out Gen Z and young millennials have found a new way to afford luxury handbags and watches. Living with mom and dad, says Morgan Stanley. I think Morgan Stanley misframed this, but what's happening is labor is not how people are paying for life no more. It's wealth transfers. So wealth transfers pay for their car and their housing, and then they use their labor to pay for the eating and things like that. Pocketbook or movie or something like that. Like I said, life is now more about wealth transfers than labor, making the cost of being ADOS heavy beyond measure. The problem is that you have millennial ADOS speaking like they're great gens or they're old black boomers. No, you're the millennial. You the one that can't afford to do that. U.S. Census data, this is a quote from the article, and this is the article directly out of, uh, I think it was Wall Street Journal, but Yahoo picked it up. U.S. Census data shows that nearly half of all young adults from ages 18 to 29 still live at home, the highest level recorded since the end of the Great Depression in 1940. Again, I told you the chart. I don't know what else to tell you. Everybody asked me to teach somebody. If don't know about, if you were raised on, th- on favorite things and Meghan Markle and all that, I can't really teach you nothing. You don't know much. You have Christ. This is how you build your life. You just put stuff on a board. Some of the world's most influential thought leaders and Oprah, for starters, all agree it's wholly possible. Turn your dreams into reality. This is Oprah Daily, a vision board. Turn your goal into crafter to no. Oprah's favorite things. Man, if you don't get this out of here, they, they, they done made, they done built y'all out of cotton candy, wet now and laters, uh, uh, li- uh, 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 Skittles. That's been all in somebody's mouth and stuck all that together and made you out of candy. 
and then you want me to teach you about this hard economics and this truth you don't want to hear this hell no as i wrote almost a decade ago i wrote this piece in huff post 2020 2013 rise of legacy the new era that has arrived brings us back to a time where what you will become is based not on how much chase will loan you without collateral but rather what your grandfather left you years ago we talking today we getting there we almost done i got another couple callers i want to take let's go back to that article i think many will miss what is being said because the title framed it incorrectly what do i mean the title framed it through irresponsibility gen z and young millennials have found a new way to afford luxury handbags no this they found the math on how you live today your boomers and your and your great great gens gotta give you something from when times were better when wealth was being shared. It's not rocket science. They tell you half the story, so you end up blaming yourself. So you act to actually don't blame the system and don't demand change. I think many will miss what is being said because the title framed it incorrectly. Literally, this title is saying that Gen Z and younger millennials are paying for the basic cost of life with parental transfers of wealth and using labor for the consumption goods in their life. That's America in 2022. We look and uh, the first time I saw soap locked up was in, I believe, South Africa. Then uh, the second time I seen it was in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, um, years later. It's now everywhere. They locking the soap up. That's because of the depression that we're in. They just not telling us. They don't want us to get frustrated. 99 cent only store used to be called 99 cent only. They don't call it that no more. So you can still see it on the baskets. 99 cent only store. Meaning everything in the store was 99 cent. Not the 99 store now. And you go in there, it's 12.99, 14.99, 149. They ain't got nothing for a dollar. They ain't got nothing for a dollar. Can we talk about it? How many people saw that? Where they hustled us with the everything used to be a dollar in there. That was the whole point of going in there smelling like old fruit. <laughs> I ain't going in there if everything, if it's if I gotta lift lift it up and check prices. I knew I could put a hundred things in here and walk out of here paying a hundred dollars. Not no more. You mess around and have a bill like you went to Ralph's or you went to Vons. They locking the soap up, y'all. Yes, they are. Somebody said they locking the soap up. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Come on. And you know what that's a sign of, Hattie? That is a sign of mass wealth inequality and people are stealing essential items. You didn't have to lock it up before because it comes to nobody. Everybody had enough of soap. They didn't steal soap. Can we talk? But y'all gonna buy a car. It's almost Mario came back. This is Mario from earlier. It's almost as if the masses of folks are ignorant to these facts by systemic design. Seriously, though, who better to live unsustainable lifestyles than adults over 30 who have been taught to do so since birth? It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. But there is an answer. And that answer is ADOS. So everybody's talking about what they want to get a kid. But then when I tell them the main thing that they need to get a kid as an ADOS person in America, which is your ADOS and you need to hold that up. That's a privilege that you have, that you built this country and you make the demands on that. You tell me xenophobic or divisive or anything. Well, you don't want to give your kids no advantage because the whites are doing it through the wealth. You don't have the wealth. So then you got to do this. This is what you, the solution is. You got to do this because this is the asset that you have for your children. You've decided that everybody has this because we black all the same. So then I don't know. Just you got to just cross your fingers, deal with the depression when it comes because you don't want the solution. You want fantastical candy. Like, call it, what's your name? Where you call it from? John from Chicago, Tom. Give me your take on it. All right. You know, I'm because I've been listening to the show. Uh, I'm 60, I just turned 60. So, if I turned 20 when Ronald Reagan became president. Higher than crack ever. And this person had to grow up when crack was being sold in the 80s mm -hmm. at a high level. And then it became of age during uh, when the guy came up. In, it came of age in the 90s when Bill Clinton 
did everything he did that caused mass incarceration. And so I'm just trying to figure out where does money come from? You know, it's not impossible for a person to hit the lotto or anything like that. And God bless if that is the case. But for people that have worked for a living, I've been working since 1986. And I'm still working, and it's hard to save money because everything costs so much. The price of everything has skyrocketed, as you have been explaining to us over the years. But we love this fantasy of this beautiful life as opposed to just being honest about the fact that we are bottom cast in this country. Well, that's what they gave us. Let me say, that's what they gave us. So while they gave us Oprah, they gave white people real things. So when I say real things, I'm saying the where, so white people went from 2 trillion to 130 trillion based on government contracts, based on quantitative easing, meaning they had stocks and they had gotten stocks by putting the money that they saw in appreciation of their homes back into that. And people say, why didn't black people have homes? Well, we were redlined and we were covering it out. And there were so many different factors. Uh, you had you had uh, the reality of PPP loans being handed out incorrectly. Uh, you had white people, even when they took the bad bets, Obama didn't let them collapse. He buoyed them and then made sure that their stock stayed up, whereas he let black black uh, household wealth just disappear. You had so many different factors over that over that uh, last few decades, and then you just had irresponsibility in the boomer class of Black America at large, whereby. That was the moment, and they didn't grab enough because they was partying. They was out. They was spending money. Everybody talks about uh, uh, Gen X buying purses and bags. What about the boomers? What about the boomers? How many how many people out there got got a parent and a daddy who was married, and then he had a second family? Talk about it. You didn't have the wealth to have a second family. You didn't have the wealth for that. You right. needed to invest in the two children that you had in that first family. But that you know you living good. You ain't never seen wealth like this. I'm going I'm to take it and eat everything at once. All of this has not been part of the discussion. And so now what we have is a generation that might not get to eat nothing. But understand what I'm saying in this show. While they can eat nothing, they want to eat everything. So they want everything on the menu, but can't afford nothing on the menu. I'm going to you know, let you end out with, with what else you want to say. Well, Tom, I'm a child of, 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 of boomers. I, I, and I'm a late, late boomer. I was born in 1962, right at the end of it. And my parents are those parents that dropped the ball. They bought a home for 1968 for $17,000 and expected a person in 2000 or 1992 when that house went from 17000 to about 90 thousand. Now that same house was like $280,000. And they tricked everybody into buying these homes because you, you learn from just listening, man. At that time, you needed 20% down. Yep. I bought a house, man. I bought a house, and they allowed me to put $2,000 down on a $480,000 house. How? How does that happen? And then when I went to go refinance it, they, then they let me know. Oh no, you bought 125 percent of the value, 125 percent of the value of the home. You can't refinance it because there's no equity in it. And of course, how, how you gonna have equity putting two thousand dollars down on a house? It just doesn't work. And just like you said, Obama came and he booed white America, while at the same time. <laughs> telling us we couldn't give reparations. I love you, Tom. Man, thank you're you. absolutely right. Thank you so much for calling. Yep. Man, man, man. What a show. I wanted to have a discussion around, again, the original conversation, which is y'all buying your kids a car. I most definitely will not. Maybe I'll help with like part of the down payment. And how it was framed around why the hell would y'all have to put my kids through the same as I went through. Because you live in an era where you might not get a choice. Because you live in an era where they might need the exact skills she's talking about. 
because you live in an era where you haven't done the politics. And your mama didn't do the politics and your grandmama didn't do the politics. You can't live in 1975 in 2022. No matter how many promises you make and how many cars you think you're going to give out. One car, two car, three car, four. Callers, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much for call, uh, listening. Tone Talks, please go to tonetalks.net to subscribe, donate, share this video. We having this discussion. Nobody else is having it this way. Thank you.